Hey everybody, it's Miranda Patron back to do a heart mandala with you today. Um, I have already painted my heart on this stone, but I feel felt like that was just what this one was calling for, was a heart. So if you have some larger, abnormally shaped ones that you can't do a circle mandala on, you can always do a heart mandala. So this stone is about four inches across and about three and a half tall. Um, I know I keep forgetting to say the sizes of the stones that I'm working on, so I'm going to try to be better about that now in the future tutorials. And I'll see if I can go back and measure the other stones that I've done in the past and put it in the descriptions. Um, so for this one, I just painted a heart shape on it and we are going to start the mandala. I think I'm going to start from up here. You can start from any point on your heart. You could do it from the center and work your way out. Um, but I think for this one I'm going to st start in the upper right corner and just see where the pattern goes from there. I have an idea of some colors I'd like to work with this time. Um, I'm kind of liking the sea glass, sea minty mist greens and the spring greens and the more subdued pastels and then we'll maybe throw in a couple metallics to see how it goes so and also in this video I am going to do it with the dotting tools because I was asked to show another design with the dotting tools so we're gonna do this one with the dotting tools um, and not the brushes and hopefully that will be easy for all you daughters out there to go ahead and use your tools for this video and to make the heart. Alright, so since it's a heart we don't have to find the center if we're going to start up here, um, but one thing I can say that is helpful if you have trouble making your lines symmetrical or even if you have an idea of the pattern that you want to do, you can use a compass and say we're going to start our center here and you can put your compass there and create lines to follow for guidelines as you go throughout the piece so that it keeps the symmetry all throughout and that way they all stay lined up so as you can see you can just put some there or you can also actually plan out how far you want to go and do your lines. I'm just going to start off with making a dot and we'll work our way from there, but this is just an idea when you're on your own and not following a tutorial to do your own. So the compass comes in helpful for that. You can use it on canvas, rocks, um, whatever you're doing. Wood, if you're doing the wood discs. And it should help you to kind of gauge your sizes and keep your symmetry. Okay, so usually I use a paintbrush to do the first, well, usually I paint the whole stone with a paintbrush, but to do the first circle, but because it's a semicircle and it's just easier, but you can also use your dotting tools. Just go for a smaller one, and you're just gonna draw your semicircle. See, I like to etch on here, because then it's better than the pencils and you don't have the eraser marks. So um, I just etch on where I would like to start the design. Or sometimes I just go for it and paint it. But <clears throat> if you're going to use the dotting tools, sometimes that's really helpful. And you can kind of stay in within the guideline that way. So I... I'm going to start with this nice sea glass color from Decort and the Americanas. We're going to use a few greens, like I said, and some silver and metallics, and we'll see where we go from there. But this is the first of them. Alright, so the sea glass green. And you just want to get a good amount on there. Start at the edge of your heart. And then just kind of draw in your semicircle. And you want to stay within the confines of your heart shape, of course, too. So stay within your border. If 
think I'm actually going to make it a little taller. So we'll do some little dots around that with the silver morning. So using one of the smallest dotting tools that you have. Just going to try to start up at the center and then just do some small silver dots around our starting dot here. And I'm going to go back to that sea glass green and kind of continue. Maybe that's a little too big. Continue the design out a little bit farther. I'm going to go a little bit bigger with some white. Maybe we'll just do one. <clears throat> Maybe we'll just do three of the whites here. So just kind of space it out about a quarter of an inch. Well, depending on the size of your rack. So it doesn't have to fall within the spaces of the ones we just made. You're just spacing it out on its own <clears throat> so that we just have three to start the design getting a little bit larger. Okay, now I'm using one of the smaller tools again and going with the spring green. I think we'll just tuck a couple in here. like that. And I'm going to go for one of the larger stipling ends and we're going to carry that sea glass green that was our big dot that we started with out above the lighter green, the spring green that we just put down. So then part of the decision you have is I can probably fit one here that's a whole one, but over here, your heart ends, so you can either just leave it without a dot, or we can do like we did for our center dot, because this is the way the design would go, is there would be one here, and we'll just kind of draw it in half circle like. so. So it looks like we took a heart shape out of a main mandala that like the design had been whole. There. I think I'm gonna do the smaller dots around the sea glass green with this super fun chocolate metallic from Deco Art. Nice and shiny. <clears throat> a little coppery. But we'll do those dots around the little dots and this one is a multi-surface one which is okay it's a little thicker but we're doing small dots with it too so it shouldn't be an issue so this one you're not going to get to finish all the way around of course because we're at the edge of the heart Now 
And you don't want to crowd it too much, just put what you can fit. They don't have to be the exact same number around every dot. The same with this one. We're not going to get to go all the way around the other way, obviously. We'll just tuck our nice shiny metallic around where we can fit it. Okay. So, buttermilk is a nice creamy yellow. I'm going to go with the largest end stapling tool. And I'm going to put some larger ones up here above the chocolate, or in between rather the chocolate ones that we did. Now one thing with tools, if you have a dotting tool that's say, I don't even know, it's like three millimeters, we'll just say that, but you want the dot to be bigger, you can also just draw the circle out like you're painting it. So just draw it to the size that you want on each one. And while these are still wet, I'm actually going to steal some of the paint from those dots. And let's see, can we fit three? I think I can fit three. Three little dots down to the white dot that's in the center. Or not in the center, but in between each one. So I kind of just see what fits the stone as I go. I don't <clears throat> generally have a plan for design. You just kind of decide what you're going to fit in spaces and try new things and do it different the next time and then you come up with lots of designs that way. So I <laughs> um, just generally pick a color pattern, palette rather, and then go on our merry adventure. So <laughs> I really kind of like how this one is coming out. I think we're going to go with the white to kind of make a little tripod to make a little stepping stone type idea to do a larger dot up here. So we'll just take the white and maybe we'll just do one, two, and then one up top here. And then we have some negative space in between from our background. Mm. Go a little bit bigger. And then can we fit over here? Maybe not. Maybe we can only fit the one and the one. So I think with this one too, alternating between light and dark kind of gives it that contrast too. So. I put the white here and we have the light buttermilk, so I'm going to go back to that chocolate that we used and do a large dot of chocolate here. Nice and shiny. And so with this one I'm close to my edge, so it's not going to get a full almost a full dot, but not quite. And then with this one, we're on the edge again, so it's going to be the same as when we did our first starting dot. So you may find it easier to just kind of draw the line and then a semicircle for the size that you're using. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a little signature design that I like to do in some of my pieces that I call the S-curl. So I actually have an etching tool. I call it an etching tool, but really it's just the dotting tool that I broke the end off of, so it's very sharp. You could use a tack. Um, you could also use pencil. I generally like to etch into the background though because I get 
and frustrated with erasure marks and with the eraser pieces getting everywhere. So this is uh, going to scratch into it and then uh, even after we paint off over it, once you varnish the um, or even water, you could get rid of the lines with that if you have any that are still showing. So I'm going to take my etching tool and we're just going to kind of draw a decorative S. I still have a little paint on here on here because we're going to follow that with dots. And it'll kind of give you an idea of where you can put the design. Just above the chocolate dot. So I think this will kind of also, I'd like to do the negative space, so this will leave us some good negative space in there too with our black background to help contrast the colors which we're using. So, so like I said, you know, contrasting, we go dark light, dark light. Um, maybe we'll go with white for our S's. Or I'm going to go with white. You don't have to do the same. <laughs> it's just what I think I'm going to go with here. I usually start in the center of them because I like them to wane by the end, have less paint. So you're doing the thicker dots in the center of the S and then working your way around the tail, you lose the paint off the tool. So I have too much paint on this one, so I'm going to drop it off over here at this S. And then now I have about enough see, on there to finish up the little dots on this one. See, so it gives a lot more character. I don't know, I tucking in the dots all the time, you can't decide if that's how you want your design to go, just throw something else in there. Triangle, an arrow, whatever. And that'll also help you with the negative space. So I've had some of my classes tell me they have trouble deciding how to create negative space, but sometimes it's just by what you're adding in that creates the negative space. So this this obviously isn't going to take up all the space between the chocolate dots. So it's going to leave some negative space there from the background. So you can use different backgrounds, whatever you want to show through from behind. If you know you're going to do more negative space, you can use all sorts of backgrounds. So it just opens up a whole another world of possibilities for designs, which I think is really endless with mandalas. You just keep going. <laughs> so that I got too much on it and I have nowhere to drop it off. So I'm just going to steal a little from that one. There. How fun is that? All right. So I have this really nice Williamsburg blue that I'm going to use next and do a fairly large dot out here and we'll do smaller as we get in. But I think I'm only going to be able to do it to these two dots above. Maybe we can go along there, we'll see. So Williamsburg blue. And I actually have to turn my stone because of how I'm going to be doing this just so I can get a better eye and feel for what my design is going to look like. So kind of visualizing where we're going, I think we will be able to do it over here too. This would be out here, so you're not going to do it over there. Maybe just one blue dot will end up there. <clears throat> but we'll start with the larger ones out and see how many we can fit down to the chocolate one that we did. Oh, and see that's, this would have gone like that. So we'll skip, we'll just do one probably there. It's gonna go with the larger end and just let the paint go off, but I think I'll use the smaller end just so I can see what I'm doing to put a couple dots down to here. Two, 
I'll go with three. Um, and then we'll tuck a little one over here. And a little tiny one there. Just because your design would have continued if you if we had more space outside the heart. Okay, I'm gonna steal a little from this and continue the little dots around just the top dot here. Some, it's already like a slate blue, but we'll add some slate actual gray around the little dots as well. Let's do another ring. We'll bring that green out here above our S curls. We'll take that C glass and go with a kind of larger, not too large, but a little. Kind of like a medium sized dot, I guess, over the S. Not as large as some of the ones that we've done on the piece, but kind of in between. Okay, I think we'll go with the, the buttermilk yellow around the green. Just using the tiny end of the smallest stipling tool to get the little dots. And then this little guy over here is going to be a little difficult, so we'll pretend to put a dot there, work our way around, pretend, pretend, and just kind of helps me gauge the sizes going through the motions. You may not need to do that, but I do, so. <laughs> Um, all right, so the yellow, and then let's go back to that spring green. And I think we'll do a couple rows of this spring green.
Okay, I'll go back to that darker sea glass again. I like to use a lot of the same <coughs> colors, then it doesn't get too busy in a piece, so to kind of keep your palette similar. And then I also like to go the light to dark colors, so I think that's what I'm going to work on pushing some down through here. And we'll do two rows of this seed glass green also. And they're not going to go all the way down again, so I'm just going to stop them once I hit the blue. This one I want to get a little bit off so I can start smaller dots down here. And I just kind of tapped the edge to make it look like there would be a dot there if the heart was bigger. And my spacing is a little bit off which is fine. And just take this row to fill in that space, just bring it all the way down and around. I tend to do that too. Sometimes if one dot's bigger than the other, if the rock is really weird shaped, sometimes you can put things, sometimes you can't. That was why I was saying earlier, try to gauge <coughs> the next design you're going to pick to make sure it fits pretty decently where you want it to go all the way around. And that way you still have your symmetry of your design. Actually going to go a little darker. Well, I was thinking on a darker green. But I might just go for a copper, an actual copper, instead of the chocolate metallic. We'll go for a copper to put a butt up against the the green that we have going here. And I'm gonna go a little bit bigger with the dotting tool, the stipling tool, um, with the worn penny. And we'll do a couple rows of that as well. Oh, came out a little smaller because I didn't get quite enough paint on it, but that's okay. So I'm kind of making them to a point at the top here, if you can see. I know I hadn't planned the copper into the palette, but I feel like copper and green go really well together, so I'm just going to change my mind midway, as usual. <laughs> Plus I start to get into like the pastels, and I feel like I need some kind of pop of color, and I'm tempted to put purple in here, but I don't really want to. I want to kind of keep it these browns and slates and greens, because I really like that look, but I, I also have a tendency to want to add crazy colors in with things. <laughs> yeah, that looks nice. I apologize, I bumped my camera. I hope you can see it now. So I was coming to a point with these and working my way around. I'm going to do the blue bonnet from Apple Barrel because I really like this color and it's like a periwinkle. 
Now I'm pushing the boundaries here of my potential to go into purple. <laughs> It'll help brighten it a little bit here, is which that's what I'm looking for a little. All right, so we'll just do two of the lighter ones here. Go back to that Williamsburg blue. Do another one here. Maybe we'll steal a little from it here. yellow at the top. Okay, so now we're going to add in a drag here. The dot drag with your dotting tool. I think I'm going to go with the white. We're just going to do tiny ones. So grab a small, small, small stylus. And just put a little bit on it because we're just going to do some little flourishes right along the sides of these little ones here. Okay, and we're going to go back to our green for a little bit of help here. Not three. Let's do them from the right side. So we're going to do a dot drag again. <clears throat> and we're going to go with the sea glass green. So we're going to go from the top here down in. So just a little one here. We'll get a full one here. And then a full one there. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Okay, we get a good amount on. Start at the top. I'm gonna drag it down in between the copper and the white. This one we need less on it because it's only going a short distance. We want it to look like it would have continued on, but and then this one, start at the top, and drag it down into between the copper and the white. And it didn't quite go all the way, so I'll help it a little there. <laughs> I think we can actually, we'll tuck a spring green one over it to kind of keep carrying the colors out. <clears throat> so I'm going back to the spring green. I'm going to go with about the same size swipe or dot drag, whichever you call it. Um, I'm going to go above and we'll start below. I think I have too much on there, so I'm going to let some go over here. And you'll learn as you go about how much paint you're going to need for certain designs. or You start to learn how much you need for size dots and how far to drag it. So like that one has too much, so I'm gonna just toss some on the paper towel. There, so you can see it's really shaping up nice. I think I'm gonna go back to the chocolate. And I think maybe we can add one here. Just to kind of help carry that color out again, too. Okay, 
Okay, so I want it a little bit longer, but I want it skinnier, so I'm going to use a smaller stylus. I think I'll be able to do it with this one because it's fluid enough. But we won't know unless we try. So let's start out here and drag it in. Yep, it worked. Cool. I think that's as far as I want to go, <coughs> pardon me, with this design, but to kind of enclose the piece, I think we'll do a couple lines outside the outskirts. So like we were talking early on, just to kind of enclose the design. So it's still going to give you some negative space. Just want to make sure I have this at the right angle. So we'll do a couple rows out like that so you can kind of get an idea of where it's going. And maybe in white to just kind of complete it and close it. Maybe white and silver. Let's start with white, we'll see. <laughs> And I'm using just the, one of the smaller styluses for smaller dots, so just kind of keep it still a little dainty. That one's going to run together because I think I did it too big. Yep. Alright, well, here's an opportunity with a background to fix a mistake. Or something that was unintended. I was in a rush and put too much paint on it. It's hard when you see people's pieces totally completed. It's like, wow, they never make a mistake. Well, it happens all the time. But fixing it is a very helpful tool to know. And it's much easier on a background like this to fix a mistake like that. <clears throat> you know, I keep saying mistake, but it's just unintended. But that's actually what I did dribbled one into another and started another design. So sometimes you can just create another design out of it as well. So what I want to do... I'm not sure if the recording on the Wi-Fi tripped up on that, but... So I'm going to get as much of this white off as I can. I'm actually going to go to my brushes for that just because I find that a lot easier. And the dotting tool, so grab a brush, just grab off the paint that you can. And because we have a background, this will make it easier. And just want it flat as possible. And then all we do is take the color that we used for our background and dab over it. Okay. That brush is still a little wet.
So while that's drying, we can work on some other things here. I'll grab back my dotting tools here. And we can do some top dots, which kind of help highlight the other dots. I'm going to use white on top of the buttermilk. Just a little dab there. I think I will I want to carry the chocolate into the center of the blue. Yeah, let's do that. Why not? on the rest of this white line out here too. We'll do that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm debating whether or not I wanted to put them in the spaces. If I want to put them one over each other or just want to do another line. I think I'll just follow that other line that I drew. Actually gonna stop there because this is still a little damp, so I don't want to push it because it's gonna go right through here. And I don't want them to bleed into one another, and then we'll have gray, and we'll have to redo it again. <laughs> so we'll let that dry. I think though that we could fit in a couple more rows on the outside. Do we want to keep it light like the white or do we want to go dark to kind of finish it off on the outside? Decisions, decisions. I think that I'm going to go with the chocolate metallic because I really like it and I just want to keep carrying it throughout the whole piece. So that's what I'm going to do. These little lines I just drew are a little off so I'm just going to erase those and just go my own. You can just center them up to make sure they're in line with your other ones. If you were wondering too, my tools do not, they don't come bent this way. I bent them this way. And if you look through my videos on how to bend your dotting tools, they have a video on how you can do that. And bend your own paintbrushes too. You just have to be careful not to break them. Because too many times of bending, they will break.
You can see this metallic, because it's a multi-surface paint, they start to get drier quicker sometimes. They get a little chunky. So you can put a damp paper towel over it or just don't pour as much so you're not wasting your paint and then just keep re-pouring when you want to use it. Debating whether or not I want to squeeze some in here. Oh, I already touched it, so I'm going to go for it. In, in the little gaps of the last row I did, I'm just going to tuck a couple in here. And you may or may not be able to do that with your design. It just depends on how big your stone is, how big your heart is. Huh, for some reason, that's taken a while to dry. We'll get back to that. Okay, so we can keep on a little bit with some of the whites in the second row, just to kind of finish that up a little. And I think, seeing the angle of this, I'm probably going to be able to tuck another one or two chocolate ones in there. Just one from the angle that I did. One and a half. <laughs> All right. So I'm just waiting for that black to dry to finish up those two white dots, and then our heart will be done. So after that's dry, I have a varnish from Liquitex that I use, and it is fantastic, super protectant. They have other ones that are matte, less glossy, um, just regular gloss, but it also has UV protectant in it, and it's water resistant. So I have only ever had to use one coat on it. And I use one of the sponge brushes, <clears throat> pardon me, like these, just to put the varnish on with, and that way it doesn't get overworked and you don't get lines in your varnish when it dries. And it protects the stone. I mean, the UV protectant stops it from fading and the it goes on pretty thick, so I ha only have to do one coat. I've had them in my garden for years, probably 10 years now. And I've joked before, I know, but we've actually hit them with the lawnmower, and it hasn't done any damage to the stone or the paint. Um, the lawnmower was not quite so lucky, but that is how well that this Liquitec varnish protects. So I'm actually really impressed with that product. I have used sprays in the past and was not happy. I had one spray white stuff all over a piece I had been working on for three weeks. <coughs> so that was kind of a bummer. So now I like to see where I'm putting the varnish and what where it's going on and how it's drying instead of just taking it by chance out of a spray can. So that's just my personal preference. A lot of people have had success with the Krylon sprays, um, but I personally have not tried that because I am fearful of messing something up. So maybe I'll just do it on a stone that I don't care. I'll get some and try it. But I like this. It goes on ev even and smooth, and I haven't ever had a problem, so I like to stick with what I know works for that. But. Okay, so I think it's dry enough to just tuck our last two dots there in the white. And now that, oops, is fixed, and we are done. Here is our heart for today. I really like how that. Well, I hope you liked it too. 
so please if you did go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and if you are looking for my other videos like I said about the one with the bent bending your tools I have that one there what kind of paints you can use and then there's a ton of other videos on how to do certain stones so please feel free to go and check those out and subscribe so you can see all the videos that are past and upcoming and feel free to share them with anyone who's interested in painting or just wants to watch painting or enjoys rock painting and stones. I look forward to doing another stone painting with you soon and I hope you all have a great day. Feel free also, let me add, to leave whatever feedback or comments in the section below. You can say about upcoming videos you'd like to see or ask questions I try to answer. Um, you can also go to my Facebook page at P4 Miranda Patron. I'm on there and on Instagram too. So feel free to check those out as I frequent them all. And I will uh, get back to you as soon as I can with questions, answers to questions. So have a great day and happy painting.